Hey everybody, welcome back to the Karen Cut YouTube channel. And if you're new here, I sure do appreciate you stopping by and watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below and check out our Instagram at Karen Cut and our Patreon at Karen Cut. All the proceeds from the Patreon are going to go directly back into the channel to buy new nice new equipment to make the quality and the content better for you guys. And before we get too carried all, carried away, I want to show you guys our 750 subscriber giveaway knife. So make sure you got make sure you guys are uh, well. Obviously, like the video, subscribe, make sure you share it. Tell your friends, your family, aunts, uncles, firstborn child, sons, daughters, whoever. Let's get the let's get these subscribers up so we can give this knife away to you guys. And I also have a thousand subscriber giveaway knife too. So right now at the recording of this, I think I'm at 620 um, subscribers. So I'm kind of I'm recording these in advance. So hopefully, um, well, hopefully I'm already to the 750 giveaway mark. So that would be pretty cool. But uh, anyway, so let's get right on into it. Our good buddy Stephen Weigel sent this knife over for us to review and uh, take a look at. He actually sent this directly to my house for me to look at, and uh, it is awesome. So he's never even seen this knife. He bought, purchased, and paid for, and I am just going to go ahead and go do a review on it. I've been uh, I carried it around for a couple days, taking it to work, and uh, showed all the guys, and uh, they do definitely love this thing as much as I do. This thing is a sweet knife, and it is really cool for Microtech to be uh, getting the price down on these. I know this one isn't exactly the cheapest one they do. Um, they do have like an FRN kind of uh, injection molded, you know, kind of handle, and that one's less than 100 and It's less than $200, like $190 or something around that. And, um, of course, this is the fluted G10. So this one bumps the price up a little more. I think I've seen these ones around 257 And this exact one with the plain edge and the uh, flat dark earth kind of colored G10, this one is incredibly hard to find right now. I uh, can actually find none of them in stock. They do have some that are half serrated, half plain edge, and that one, you know, you can get that one. But uh, this actual, the plain edge one, it is nowhere to be found right now. So that is kind of unfortunate, but I know that they are going to be making new ones. And they do he even have a bump up. They have aluminum, fluted aluminum G10 too. Fluted aluminum G10, what am I saying? Fluted aluminum scales. So that's pretty cool. Really do like that one. And that one, it's probably coming in over $300. So you have a lot of, you know, different different variations. You got the FRN, the G10, the aluminum, and the heck, I bet you can even get titanium, you know, aftermarket scales for them also. So this thing is pretty cool. You know, what are we looking at here? We have the Microtech MSI. So that's Microtech Standard Issue. It is uh, their take on a, um, I don't really want to say a budget-minded knife. It is definitely one of the cheaper ones that they've ever produced. I can pretty much guarantee that Microtech is known for their, you know, obviously their quality. They're known for their out the front automatics. That's the main thing that Microtech does. Uh, you know, Marfi Tony Marfione, he is the owner of the company. Pretty sure about that. And he's definitely, I know, the designer that made this one. And uh, so they have their patented ram lock. So that is actually what they're calling this. It's kind of, it's not even similar to an access lock. It's really not that. It's kind of an access lock mixed with spider coast ball lock you can see that the um you can see that spring in there so when you pull back on the actual lock bar well it's the ramp whatever you want to call this you know the actual like sliding piece that engages the tang of the blade so it's uh you know held back with the spring tension right there so as soon as you pull back on this it's going to release the blade and this thing is definitely sweet and i think i would you know be easy to say that this is going to be stronger than any access lock or anything like that. I bet this is the. I know some people say that it's not, and they uh, you know have some disengaged. So go ahead and whacked on the table. Nothing crazy. That was three pretty solid whacks, and uh, there's no failure, no nothing like that. This does kind of have a little bit of a lock stick. It almost feels like, but uh, that's nothing too bad. I um, don't mind that one at all. But uh, overall, definitely pretty sweet. So let's go ahead and get some um, measurements on this thing, if you will. Let's go ahead and get the tape measure out. I don't know if you guys like the tape measure more or the roller. Go ahead and let me down, know down in the comments. I just thought this might be a little easier for you guys to see. So from the tip to the butt, it's kind of got the nice land, like angled handle going on there. But we're about 9 inches overall. Blade length is coming in right at 4 inches or at least 3.8. Real close to the, go out here to the tip of the scale. And uh, sharpened edge, we are looking at eh, it's right about 3.5 inches, the actual sharpened edge. And uh, definitely pretty cool, but let's go ahead and do the closed, measured in the closed from tip to end, or five and a quarter inches. So this is definitely a full size knife, definitely not small. Let's go ahead and get a weight on this thing. There we go. Get Miss Carrie Cut's kitchen scale out. 
we are looking at 5.2 ounces. So this is definitely not a uh, light knife by any any stretch of the imagination, but it's you know it's got some heft to it, and that's fine with me. You know I want this to be a hard use knife, and definitely be able to hard use. You can look down inside there, and uh, they're really I mean there's a uh, it's not full length liners. It's kind of like a cartridge liner, just how you know how well how Benchmade kind of does their axis lock style. So you can kind of see down in there for the most part. I feel like a lot of the weight is coming back here. Obviously the blade and the ram lock thing, but the actual backspacer. There's a lot of weight back there in the actual backspacer itself. So we're pretty much right here, right behind the pivot for the uh, balance point of the knife, which is definitely pretty nice. Um, this thing does have M390 MK steel, so that is Microtex proprietary steel that they have Bowler make for them. So M390, if you guys aren't uh, familiar with it, it is definitely a nice powder metal steel. It's stainless, good uh, edge retention on it, good amount of toughness, and I'm pretty sure that, well, Microtech just likes to use it. I don't know if it's uh, easier on their um, equipment or whatever, but it just seems like M390 MK is what they're going with. So we have a black coated blade, satin on the flats, and uh, this is a nice modified sheep's foot blade. So this is going to be really great for slicing. Um, we have a high flat grind on it all the way up here to the swedge. So that's definitely nice to see. Um, like I said, we got the stainless steel liners going on. I don't really know what all I'm missing here. There is a whole lot of hardware going on here. But the only good thing about it is that this is all T8 on the hardware. So, I mean, the pivot screw, that's going to be a T15. I don't have to go out to the garage to actually go get a quarter inch, you know, a quarter inch bit that's going to be able to fit that pivot. And um, so we got T8 for all the body screws. I'm pretty sure we even got T8 for the pocket clip. We do T8 for the pocket clip. And this is going to be, you know, reversible tip up only. Left or right hand carry. Steven is a lefty, so I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, swapped over for him. We're going to put this on to the other side for him. And I'm not, don't know if we're going to do, do a disassembly video on this one just yet. Um, of course, this thing is brand new. And, you know, other than just my own curiosity of what is on the inside of this knife, I know he is definitely going to be getting some new scales. He is, um, Steven loves to have uh, his copper and his brass scales. He likes all that cool stuff. So, I imagine he's going to get some kind of aluminum or some kind of some kind of something to put on this knife. So let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. How about up against the Benchmade Presidio 2? So we're pretty close in length right there, but the uh, MSI is going to be a little bit bigger. But I feel like um, you know they're not trying to uh, beat Benchmade because they're already you know well you know renowned knife company. You know Microtech. Everybody knows them. Everybody knows Benchmade at the same time, but. I feel like um, this one is definitely going to be more hard use than um, the Benchmade Presidio. And I feel like this is already a very hard use knife. I mean, the Adamus might be even more harder use than that. But still, I really do like it for a competitor. This thing is sweet. And it's pretty much the same price as that one, too. So how about a, uh, let's go up against the PM2. It's definitely going to be bigger than the PM2 there. Pretty good size comparison. Let's go ahead, another Axis style lock. Let's go ahead with the new Kershaw Bel Air. It definitely dwarfs that one. This is a sweet knife too, though. Get ready for a review coming on this one. And then we have the Hogue Deca. This one's in Magna Cut, right? Yep, Magna Cut on that one. This one's super nice. Looks like he already put his own edge on that one. So definitely pretty cool, but a lot bigger than that one. And then how about let's end it off with the 940. Okay, let's go ahead and do some yeah, so pretty good. Definitely a large knife by any stretch of the imagination. If you had five fingers, you could get five or six fingers on this thing, that's for sure. So all even you can choke up even more and look at all that's left out of there. But super ergonomic handle. I really do like it. Really everything about this knife. I really don't have any cons whatsoever for it. Um, of course, the uh, price, I mean, everything you're looking for, it's made in America. Oversized on all the... Um, hardware, I mean, there is a lot of hardware going on here, but that if there was a con, that would probably be the only thing. But I know it just takes a lot to actually be able to put this mechanism together, plus this giant backspacer. And uh, they even have a lantern tool in there, too, so Steven's going to love that. But I really do like the uh, T8 pocket clip screws, but other than they could be, they, well, they, I don't know if they could actually recess those or not, but it would be nice to see. But other than that, um, you really uh, have you know great value and uh, excellence in the execution of this knife, the quality, the build quality. Um, of course, you're getting the Microtech name, the Microtech um, warranty, and all that kind of stuff too. So they definitely do take care of all their customers. 
and uh, they support it. So if you guys want to support them, you're supporting USA Manufacturing, you're supporting local families in your area, and uh, it's just awesome to see. I really do love me some American-made products. So, Stephen, you're going to love this thing, and I give this one a 10 out of 10 for sure. I'm definitely going to be looking into getting one of these. I'll probably just get the uh, injected molded handle one, and if I do like aftermarket scales later on in the future, I'll probably get those. But I'll probably just get the black-on-black uh, -black one and uh, keep the price down. So... Other than that, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. But I definitely approve of this one, and this is going to be a sweet knife that I think everybody should probably get their hands on. And, and if you're comparing apples to apples versus, you know, Benchmade versus the Microtech MSI, I would go ahead and venture to go with the Microtech MSI. I know there's a lot of Benchmade fanboys out there, and I'm definitely, I'm one of them too, myself. I like them. This is the first Microtech that I've ever really messed with, but I'm blown away at the quality that they have on this thing and the price point that the entry level ones come at is you know pretty mind-blowing so definitely awesome to see that and uh i hope you guys like this one too so steven thanks for sending this over for me to take a look at i can't wait to get this thing back to you and hear your feedback on it also and uh, i bet you'll really put it through its paces and uh, really work this thing hard like it should be so all right till next time thank you